Welcome to everyone, I'm Paolo Sorricchio, Master Student at DigiPan Institute of Technology and I'm here to show you today with this video my Math 500 project. Uh, basically Math 500 is a curves and surfaces course and we had to implement this project that is actually, as you can see here, it's made out of four different projects. In for project one, we had to uh, resolve the, the Castellier algorithm for Bezier curves and basically uh, the user can insert any number of points and um, we, we have to use the nested linear interpolation uh, using three different algorithms to approximate those points. So basically this is project one. When you start you'll see the black, this, wow, this great black window, pretty fancy. And you can start clicking with your mouse and you will see the points. Okay. And yeah, basically this is the curve that is um, uh, approximating all the point using the Nestlean interpolation. So let's clear. With left button of the mouse you insert points, with right button of the mouse you you open a menu and then you choose whatever you want. So let's clear. Let's start from the beginning. We insert four points and we have this menu. These are the first three voices are the three different algorithms we can use. So basically the algorithm the three different algorithms have all the almost the same behavior so you won't really notice any difference the only difference you will notice is using the midpoint subdivision because um, it is a bit more precise than nested linear interpolation and pb form so you can see that the curve is slightly changing anyway with nested linear interpolation um, you can draw all the T values, so all the intermediate values that are drawing the curve, you have to enable the T values and you can see this point and moving this slider you will see this point going all over the curve. So moving this slider down here, you see the you see that the it's the, it's this point all the, the set of the points drawn by the by this this line is the curve you're actually seeing. There you are. And let's clear. You can see that you can insert any number of points. Oh, it's probably better to clear the cell. So we have to clear the shell. We go here and we say disable T values. There you are. And you can move the points in real time. Now, if it's if the video, video is lagging, I do apologize. It's because I'm recording. But you can definitely try this on your computer. Again, you can download this for free at www.paulusurikia.com. And I tested this on an Intel chipset video card, so it should run pretty smoothly on every computer you have. And yeah, you can modify the points and the curve is modified in real time. If you want to go back to the menu, we can just press right button and click to return to main menu okay we are here back to the menu let's go to the second project the second project is really fun because um, we are interpolating polynomials and since the user can insert any amounts of point actually I set the maximum amount of points to 65 because it's I mean it's a lot of points and we are interpolating polynomials, therefore it means that we are going to end up, if we are using 65 points, with a polynomial of degree 65. So you can expect that something is gonna be wrong, because uh, with these numbers, the approximation, even the double floating point value starts to have um, floating point errors. So here I'm actually drawing the polynomial that is passing through all these points and let's see what happens when you add more points. You see that the curve is starting to be really crazy and here you are it's really easy to break this thing. Yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Again this react absolutely in real time so you have no problem but I suggest to use not and and higher number of points because it's not really clear what is happening here so let's clear everything and 
it is nice how with um, even I don't know with how many are these seven points it's nice to see how the curve mm, is modified in real time and I'm actually calculating every time you modify the point I'm actually calculating the polynomial that is passing through those points uh, so yeah this is project part two let's go back to the home again right click of the mouse and then select back to the main menu okay we are here back to the home menu and now with this pro with project 3 we're going to um, do the same thing we were doing with project 2 so trying to find the polynomial that passes through all the points but we're not actually finding the polynomial we are uh, interpolating all those points with splines so basically um, you will see that uh, the curve will be really nice and we won't have all the problems and all the weird behaviors with the curve in project 2 so let's click on project 3 and here we can see again another fancy black window wow and if you start inserting the points this seems the same of project 2 but then you will see that even with more points the curve is nicely approximating the all the points because this is actually this is not why with the previous project all the curve was just the result of sampling one polynomial it was just one polynomial here i'm basically doing just trying to connect only um uh, the points are close together and you can see that because if i modify these points here you can see that these final points are not modified so it doesn't matter how I put these points, the final points will remain there. That is actually really different from project number two, where if you touch a point, you're modifi you modifying the entire polynomial. So that is really important. And yeah, again, this is project number three. So it's, you can add up to 65 number of points. So <laughs> enjoy. Again, you can draw them and uh, the whole curve is rendered and modified, modified and rendered in real time. So let's go back to project number four. So let's go back to the menu, back to main menu. And here we are back to the home and project number four. In project number four, we are using the Debord algorithm and to um, drawing the curve with B splines. Uh, B splines are a particular type of uh, splines and basically, again, we will have really a smooth, nice curve. And when the user will modify, will drag one point. Um, only the four points around the point dragged uh, will be modified, not the entire curve. And this means that um, even it's really efficient because this means that I don't have to recalculate the whole curve, but just the curve around those four points. So here you can see, let's click on project number four. Don't worry about all these parameters. I will explain that later. Uh, basically, let's start to draw to insert some points. And okay, we see that with only four points, we have just this piece of the curve. You see that when you insert the points, the curve is not uh, immediately drawn. Is because now we have degree three that means that we need at least four points for each B spline to be drawn so again if we clear everything with degree three we need four points three points to make any sense so with the fourth point we have this the first B spline and again whatever I move the curve is updated in real time if I insert an other point now we have these two splines it's one two one here one two three four and the other is one two three four so this point will not modify for example this part of the curve you see that this part is not modified and i can show you why if you click on draw shell you see that this part of the curve this part here is influenced by these three points you see Therefore, that means that if we are touching this point here, 
we are not modifying these values here and that is true for the whole curve so uh, if you move the shell around you see which points are influencing which part of the curve there you are again there are a really lot of parameters we can set let's delete this shell and clear the screen for example i have i can change the degree so if i change the degree obviously the curve will be shorter so let's insert degree four enter the curve is actually shorter because i mean we're using splines of degree higher than three so it means that with the same amounts of points we have few splines and other than that we can change the continuity the continuity is influencing the not sequence that is actually the values we are using to generate the our basis and basically we can continue to add more points and again the curve is modified completely real time the last priority we can change is the not sequence the user can specify manually not sequence and you can insert any number you want and you have to digit the number and press enter as you can see the not sequence is has been automatically updated and this allows you to draw different splines from different bases okay i hope you enjoyed this demonstration again you can download it for free at polosoricchio.com Go there, see all my projects, you're more than welcome to download and try them, and yeah, hope you enjoyed the video.